Well, praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. I'm grateful on this evening to be able to share with you this incredible opportunity that we can literally grow from this place. My desire, my heart's desire in prayer is that you and your family are safe, that God is covering and blessing you with healing, protection, favor, direction, and guidance in every one of our lives. I want to say to each one of you tonight, um, as being teaching this, thank you so much for consistently tuning in with us. Of course, you know I'm Pastor John McKnight, and we're just growing from this place in any location whereby which God has allowed us to go through and go to from whatever location, from whatever season, from whatever moment, whatever days, weeks, months, or even some cases years, we're believing that God's plan still is going to allow us to win as we grow from this place. One of the things that we want to do is let you know that we encourage you to remain safe and to remain cautious cautious in this season in which we're still seeing uh, a spike in staggering numbers in this um, situation by which we're dealing with, with this coronavirus, COVID-19, Delta variant. We want you to be safe. We want you to be wise. I want to be able to uh, conclude tonight, um, which will be part four, of a series by which we have been teaching for the past few weeks, dealing with fertilizing what's growing. Quick word of prayer I want to say. Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, and your grace. Speak to us with divine wisdom and instruction so that we might be able to be better now than we were before. We ask for your wisdom, guidance, and direction tonight and keep our hearts open to receive the things you have to say to us so we can grow from this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to deal with something tonight. We know that um, in our passage of Scripture that we've used primarily uh, has come from the book of Luke, the 13th chapter, and we've been dealing with the subject matter of fertilizing what's not growing in our lives, fertilizing what is not growing in our lives. I think it would be just simply an untruth. If we look at ourselves close enough and frequent enough and don't allow our visual eyes to look on others, there are areas, I believe, in each one of our lives that some areas are not growing like they should grow in our life. And we want to be able to um, not just focus on the, our strengths, but focus on those areas that need improvement. I'm not going to necessarily even just call it a weakness, but it's not as strong as other areas. And the things that maybe we have omitted things that we have not dealt with, things that we need to address so we can be better for God, better for yourself, better for your family, better for the people you love, and just better for life as a whole. And I'm just so grateful unto God that he allowed this series to come about because I believe this series has definitely been life-changing. I'm going to take about maybe three or four minutes to just kind of reevaluate some of the nuggets by which over these past few weeks that we have gone, and then I'm going to teach the strategy to be able to grow and fertilize. We made it clear that uh, to be able to fertilize something means it's something chemical or something natural. It's added to the soil or the land to increase fertility. What that really means is we want to be able to find out the things that are in our life, even the events, the experiences of life, that sometimes might not always be positive because truly I can say there have been some things that have happened in my life, in seasons of life, that I wouldn't have never wanted to have scheduled. I wouldn't have never wanted to experience. But one thing I made it clear, it was made clear that we need to understand 
that many times fertilizer uh, in its natural substance form, many times things are fertilized with waste, and the waste is a mixture of things that have just seemed like it is no longer needed or no longer effective. But one of the things in Nuggets we said at the beginning part was we can't waste the waste. We can't go through life and have things happen, and we just act as if though it never happened, but yet we need to learn the valuable lessons and get an understanding so that many things will not become repetitive deja vu or a cycle. So we can't waste the waste. Even the things that we've said have been wasted. Even the things that say we said that perhaps that was just a waste of time. We need to learn how to take those, those lessons, to take sometimes those nuggets and learn from that so that we can cause that area to still produce fertility or fertilize it to where we can still grow and doesn't leave us in a state of being complacent, doesn't leave us in a state to where we can't go higher or go further because we're so damaged by what has happened until we can't grow in that area of our life. Another segment we dealt with, we got to learn how to do and break down the word area. And this, to me, was one of the keynote parts of this teaching. The A in area is we have to analyze. The R in area is we have to remove. We have to remove those things that we analyze that are becoming uh, something in our life that is causing us not to grow. And then we have to evaluate. And that's one of the things that I think that we do so much for others. We evaluate others. But we have to evaluate ourselves. And you have to be honest with yourself and say, you know what? Uh, I didn't handle that right. You know what? That if I remain in this posture, if I remain in this mindset, I'm not going to grow the way I need to grow. And you never can look at yourself as if there's nothing about you that needs to change and, and you fall in love with your emotions and you fall so in love with your own. If some people are too in love with their own perspective, of what is to be, and sometimes you got to understand that with the scripture, not just with the system of the world, but with the word of God, we have to keep the flexibility of our minds open to hear what God wants to say, because sometimes God's going to say some things that might not be what you want to hear, but if you want to grow, you want to understand that God speak to me, even if I don't like what you're saying. I want to know what you feel. I want to know what your will is. I want to know that I'm going to fertilize these areas, even if it's difficult to fertilize, because I want to be better. So the A is analyze, the R is remove, the E is evaluate, and then we dealt with, again, adjust. We've got to learn how to not be so stubborn. We have to learn how to adjust. We have to learn that how that everything cannot go your way. You're not going to grow when it just has to be your way because you will not even know, and we will not even know, the creativity of God. One of the things that I consistently created God is make me innovative and creative. In other words, that means I have to be adjustable and I have to be able to have an open mind to hear what you want to say to me. And last but certainly not least, we want to deal with the other part and keys of um, being able to grow and fertilize things, and I dealt with life. And life was last week's teaching by which we dealt with, first of all, you have to know um, how to love, and you can't go around with bitterness and unforgiveness. So the L in life is love. The I in life is you have to increase positive words around your life, as well as positive people if you're going to grow. The F was you got to have faith and forgiveness. You must believe in God, and you cannot go around with bitterness and unforgiveness in your life. And E was you got to exclude the weeds from the ground of your heart that take up space because the weeds will attract insects, and then your life is not growing the way you need it to grow because there are too many things that are eating away that can potentially cause destruction in your life. And that brings me to tonight. We want to fertilize. We need a strategy tonight. I'm going to read the basis of Luke 13 again. 
And then I'm going to read one scripture from Jeremiah 17 and 8. And I'm going to give you a word with a strategy that I believe that if you take this lesson tonight upon yourself to hear and listen and apply what God is saying, then we will know that those areas that have been dormant are not growing for a long time. We believe that prosperity, fertility, and growth will be evident and manifested because we have followed the plan of God for our life so we can be better for him and better for ourselves. The scripture says in Luke 13, 6 through 9, it says, And he spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereof and found none. Then says he unto the dresser of his vineyard, the person who which was assigned to care for this and make sure it produces. He said to the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years analyzed, I have come seeking fruit on this tree. Remember now we dealt with area and found none. He said, Cut it down. Remove. Why cumber it the ground? Evaluate this thing, this tree has been here three years and there's no fruit. I gotta evaluate. It's time to make an adjustment. He he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, which means to fertilize it. So it looks like the person, and hopefully it wasn't you, the person who had the assignment to be able to produce fruit. There was a tree there. There was a fig tree there. There was something that was there in the man's space, on the man's territory, in the man's life. Three years had gone by, and it still hadn't produced. He said, I need you. I need you to pull this out. I need you to remove this because it's just taking up space. It's taking up time. It's taking up water. Has a great look, but it's not producing no food. This area needs to be analyzed. If something needs to be removed, then evaluate it and adjust. Because right now, in this year, we can't continue to have things that are not producing or growing in our life. Hear my heart on this. Every year that goes by, every day that goes by, every week that goes by, every month that goes by, I want you to think about this year already. From the beginning of the year until now as to where you are, what didn't grow last year? What hasn't grown the year before last? What hasn't grown the year before that? How many, how many situations and people and goals and dreams that are in your life that's just sitting there, and now you've gotten excited about just mentioning your dream, but you're not working towards it. You've got excited about just saying what your goal is. Matter of fact, your dream board has faded. And you just you just excited for the fact that you have a dream board. Having a dream board is not enough because if it keeps staying there, it'll begin to look like a nightmare because it's a reminder that none of the things that you've been believing God for, none of the things that you're not working towards because we're constantly letting things take up space. And you need to decide in life, can you afford another year? Can you afford another six months? Can you afford another 30 days and continue to see your dreams fade? Or the gifts that you have inside of you this is not just about accomplishing things for you. This teaching tonight is about your purpose in God. How are you fertilizing your gift? You can't, you can't fertilize a gift and 
don't ever want to pray. You can't fertilize a gift and don't have personal worship time. You can't fertilize a spiritual gift and want to avoid the word of God. You must be able to decide this has to grow. One of the assignments that I want you to do, and I feel led of the Spirit, and I want you to write it down between tonight and in the morning. I want you to look at your life, and I want you to write down five things and or areas that has to grow now or before this year is over. Five of the dreams, five of the goals, five of the gifts, five of the talents. Because, see, if you don't evaluate, if you don't analyze, then you'll never adjust. When you start comparing yourself to complacency, when all your friends keep saying, stuff keeps getting in the way, stuff keeps coming up, and there's no one around you with the tenacity to believe, or there's no one around you that challenges you, and you can see their struggles, and you can see their tests, but they still get away. They still get away, or they find a way to get it done. You have to have someone around your life that challenges you to get it done. And they don't have to always tell you that literally motivates you. Not not people who are trying to create this false lifestyle on, on you know, get rich schemes on, on uh, YouTube, or not people just who are doing infomercials to try to get you to buy stuff. I'm talking about people who have literally motivated you. You can see the adversity, and they're not trying to get anything from you. They're just trying to motivate you to get it. They're just trying to motivate you to make it happen. This is what this call is about. This is what this teaching is about tonight from me to you. Put some fertilizer on it. Yes, you might have wasted some time. You might have wasted time in relationships. You might have wasted time on a job. You might have wasted time on going after something that you thought was going to benefit your life. So what? It's happened now. Now what you're going to do? You got to fertilize what's not growing. You got to make sure you'll spend another 36 months, another 24 months, another 12 months, another six months, another three months. not looking at those areas of life that needs to be watered. So that brings me to this. Brings me to Jeremiah 17 and 8. And I'm going to close with the key. The keys to those areas that are not growing. That are getting ready to grow. I said that are getting ready to grow. I'm going to Jeremiah 17 and 7 and 8 tonight. Bless is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Waters, that's the answer, by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green in those trying times, and shall not be careful in the year of the drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Tonight, I want to prophetically speak something over your life, that those seasons in life, you're going to be so watered by God. You're going to be so watered by your dreams, your goals, faith and prayer and the word of God, that when those seasons come to try to dry up your water, those seasons of sun, you know, I'm, I'm in Florida, and, you know, you know, even today, you can just go outside and, and you can have drank water before you left from your house, and, and by the time you get up the street, you want more water because the heat is human. It's so many times that that you go through life and things might be a little tougher, a little bit more unexpected than what you had anticipated. 
But the scripture said, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Your trust in God, your faith in God is what waters you and whose hope the Lord is. That's powerful. You got to be planted. You got to be planted in God. If areas in your life are not growing and they need to be fertilized, you got to be rooted by water. You might not see the heat coming. You might not have seen, let me say it how, how we like to say it in church. You might not see some of the hell that you was going to have to go through. But her leaves shall be green. In other words, you're still going to produce and you're still going to be fertile and you're still going to be productive and you're still going to be prosperous. And prosperity is not just money always. You're going to have a positive spirit joy and peace. And even if there's a drought, and even if there's a pandemic, and even if the economy is threatening to crash, and even if it's difficult to be in the workplace, and even if COVID-19 and the Delta variant are prevalent and spiking as we yet speak, it's not going to stop you from yielding fruit. Because if you can produce in a famine, if you can produce in a pandemic, if you can still accomplish your goals and dreams, it's simply going to be because blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and you've been picked to bring glory to God because between your faith and God's promises, it's going to fertilize the areas that are not growing. So it brings me now to the closing of this, and I'm going to deal with waters. The answer is you cannot, even if you put fertilizer on something, it has to be watered. It has to seep in. It has to seep through. It has to be nourished. It has to be able to help bring life to it. So as I break down waters, the W in waters is if you're going to be successful, this is a foundation for all of these letters. If you're going to be successful to be able to cause areas of your life to be fertilized and grow, you need to be listening closely to everything I'm getting ready to say. The W is you need wisdom and the ability to make wise choices if you're going to have growth in your life. You just can't take advice from anyone. You just can't begin to seek advice outside of the Word of God. Yes, there's advice we can get from individuals, but nothing, there is no better advice than God's wisdom and God's word. And if you're going to grow, and I'm going to grow, we got to make wise choices. There's so many people, even in this season right now, they make choices based upon their emotions. They make choices based upon their feelings, and they do not acknowledge God. So if you're going to be watered, if you're going to grow, you got to ask God for wisdom. James said, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God who give to all men liberally. God said, I want you to have wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs, wisdom is a principal thing. You just can't make choices if you can't pray about what to do. You don't just do things off the cuff. You don't take a test and answer the, and give an answer and you don't read the question. You got to be able to understand the question so you can give the right answer. You got to understand the season we're in so you can make the wise choices. So W is wisdom. A is apply the word of God to every situation. 
that needs to grow. In other words, embrace the plan of God, and if you don't know it fully, pray until God begins to direct you, because sometimes he won't answer you right away. But you already know it's not his will that you should perish. You already know in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he has plans for you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the plans that I have for you. You know, Psalms, it says, uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, 119. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So you got to be able to apply it. Wisdom is when you apply the knowledge that gives you understanding to make the right choice. So number one, waters, wisdom. Number two, you got to apply it. The word of God to every situation because we know the word of God is right. Else. The key in waters is Take time to plan and prepare for growth to have a greater life. Take time to plan and prepare. So you want a house. You got to plan and prepare. You got to change some of those spending habits. You got to save for a down payment. You got to work on the credit situation. You got to do whatever it takes to plan and prepare. You cannot plan to lose weight and you go down one aisle and that's the ice cream aisle. Well, I know I just said something. I'm talking to myself. You got to take time to plan and prepare. You got to set short-term goals. What means short-term goals? Short-term goals is 30 days. Mid-term means 60 to 90 days. Six months to me is long-range goals because nothing's promised. And what, what happens when you build short-term goals, like 30 days, you want to get something done to accomplish you, even if you're trying to lose weight. Oh, okay, you got to set how many pounds you want to lose the first 30 days without making yourself sick or taking unnecessary things that takes your body through trauma or where you want to be healthy and do it the right way. Yeah, 30-day goals to me is, 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 is short-term. 60 to 90 is mid. Long-range goals right now need to be six months. So everything you want to do and have and accomplish for the years out, it can't. You you got to set that thing, and you got to go for it. You got to put fertilizer. You got to water it. You got to decree it. You got to believe it. So the key is take time to plan and prepare in growth in areas that are not growing, so you can have a better life. E. E in water is you have to eliminate distractions and personal insecurities. Eliminate distractions and personal insecurities. Those voices that are trying to tell you you can't do it or it's not going to happen. Satan tries to beat your mind down. Satan wants to tell you. He wants you to have fear. He wants you to have torment. And then you got people that don't want you to do it. You got people that don't believe in you. You got to make sure you eliminate those voices, distractions. Even even if they, they might be close around you, they might be family, they might be so called friends, but you have to eliminate those distractions. If you know, I didn't say you could excommunicate yourself, but if you know that they make you feel insecure, if you know the people who kind of beat down your faith or the situations or people who are just not positive or you don't you don't get that vibe you need to want to get. You need to eliminate uh, the, the levels and the types of consistent interaction. Don't, I just, you can't hang around draining people. You just can't do it if you're in a season to where you're already fighting, you're already dealing and needing momentum because the task is great. You got to eliminate the distractions and anything that brings personal insecurities, anything that talks you out of your self-belief system, not your self-arrogant system, not your self-prideful system, but believing in God and believing in yourself. That's the E in water. The R in waters is remain positive and faithful to your purpose that God has set for your life. The Bible says in Galatians 6, and let us not, verse 9, let us not be weary and well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And there's some things that take some steam out of you. There's some things that are blindside you. There's some situations and seasons that you never saw coming. You didn't see the heat. You didn't see the hell. But it's not going to stop you from being green. 
It's not going to stop you from looking prosperous and poor. There's nothing going to happen in your life to where you're just going to look tore up and don't want to live. Because you serve the true and living God. And if God be for you, it doesn't matter who's against you. You have to remain positive, faithful to your purpose by which God has given you. And the S is this. You got to have a spirit of joy. You got to appreciate life. You got to understand this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. I might not, you might not have all the food, the gas. You, it might not be living how you want to live, but you keep the spirit of joy. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in your mouth. You don't thank him for everything, but you will thank him in everything. Somebody said, well, you don't know, thank you for everything. I, I mean, I'm just being honest. I want you to just be honest. I, I didn't, you know, my father passed. I didn't thank God for my father passing. I thank God that he's with the Lord. But in that, I still got to learn how to give God praise. Because my dad was a, and is an anointed man of God, and he's with the Lord. So in the midst of grief, you can give God praise because you know that he's in a better place. So you maintain the spirit of joy. And then peace. How can you have peace in a dark world, in a chaotic world? Well, I can read Isaiah 26 and 3 that says, he'll keep me in perfect peace. Perfect in that word in the Hebrew means mature. So he, he keeps me in peace. He keeps me in maturity because I'm in the word of God and I trust in thee. So you keep the spirit of joy, spirit of peace, and we pray, God, that the spirit of success will be all over your life. So waters is wisdom to make wise choices. So the areas that need to grow in your life will come to pass. The A in waters is you have to apply the word of God to every situation that needs to grow. Brace the plan of God for your life. The T is you have to take the time to pre- to plan and prepare for greater growth in life. E, you have to eliminate all distractions and personal insecurities. You have to work on some self-enhancement, some self-enrichment. And then the R, you have to remain positive and faithful to your purpose. Last but certainly not least, the S in the waters is make sure you have the spirit of joy and gratefulness in your life. Because most time, if you're not grateful, you're going to end up bitter. Spirit of peace, and we believe God for the spirit of success over you. Well, are you ready now to where you're getting ready to make some things happen with God? I'm speaking divine momentum over you. I'm decreeing that whatever seems to be negative, you're going to put a positive word over it. There's no battery. Isn't it amazing how you would think that in order for your car, truck, or vehicle to crank up, you would need two positives? It's not the way that battery is made. That's not the way the power is made. The power is made that when a negative, it can be right next to a positive, and you get the right connection and understand that you still have the power to be able to carry out and fulfill the plan of God for your life. You can do it. Believe in God and believe in yourself. You can do it. Don't be afraid of those areas that you know. Sometimes before you put makeup on, you got to clean it. You got to clean your face before you put makeup on. You 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 got to you got to face it so God can fix it. And sometimes we can't just want to act like that thing is not doesn't need to be dealt with. And the most things you have to deal with are those things that are lying in your heart and your soul. We're bitterness and unforgiveness, shame, pain. We just ask God to make you heal and ask God to make you whole so you can bring him glory and start growing in all areas of your life that he has chosen for your destiny and for your purpose. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. You're an amazing God, and you do amazing things. Tonight, we want to grow. Tonight, we need to grow. 
Give us the power to make healthy choices. Give us the power to make right choices. Give us wisdom. Give us the power to analyze, remove, evaluate, and adjust. We bind every negative distraction. We bind, in the name of Jesus, personal insecurities that keeps us in a mindset of brokenness and failure. I decree and I declare that you'll fertilize our dreams and our goals and give us right connections and give us divine insight as to what to do. We thank you tonight because we decree and we declare that something's about to positively change in each one of our lives. Life without you is not even life. But we ask you, God, to release favor and anointing to get the job done. Those who are broken, those who are weary, those who might be grieving, those who feel overwhelmed and the enemy tries to make them feel like their life is insignificant, we bind that voice and we decree that every one of us has purpose and destiny to be better now than we were one hour ago. We thank you, God, tonight, and we're going to grow from this place. We're going to see your hand move. And we're about to see fruit in areas of our life that we haven't seen in years because that's just how we believe you. We take you at your word that you're not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should repent. If you said it, you'll do it. If you spoke it, you'll make it good. We make a promise to you, God, that you get all the glory. We'll never get arrogant. We'll never get prideful. We'll walk in humility. And we'll always remain thankful and grateful for who you are and what you've done. Heal those who might be sick physically or emotionally. And we decree and we declare now that the spirit of joy, the spirit of peace, and the spirit of success are over us tonight. And we thank you, God, that this is done in the precious, matchless, powerful name of Jesus. It's already done. And, God, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, it's time for you to get busy. It's time for you and I to make it happen. It's time to intensify your faith and believe that your praise, your effort, your application of what God has taught us is going to make a positive difference in our life. Be blessed, be safe, be wise, and be successful in Jesus' name. Pastor Jonathan McKnight, God bless you. God bless your family. Thank you for tuning in to growing from this place. God bless.